welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're continuing on our adventure in machine alignment and calibration. In our previous videos, we handled the adjustment and uh, calibration of the table. Now that our table is complete, we're ready to move on to Z. If you haven't watched the videos on uh, how we do the table, I suggest you go watch those first because a lot of the things that we do there, we're just going to repeat in Z, and we're just going to rotate everything by 90 degrees to be vertical instead of horizontal. Just like our table, our Z column is going to have six degrees of freedom as well. It's going to move up and down. It may be tilted, so it may slant forward. It may be tilted, it may slant sideways. It may be twisted, it may be doing this. That one's really hard. Okay, so with our Z, we've got a lot of freedoms of movement again that we need to check and measure. So what we're going to do first is we're going to see how square the Z motion is relative to our reference plane of our table. That's why we do our table first so that we have a good datum, a good reference plane. And now we can judge how well our Z is moving up and down. In this video, I'm just going to show you uh, one axis of movement. When you go to do a machine alignment for real, you want to test the Z head uh, in the X plane, and then you want to rotate your, your reference around and check it in the Y plane. That way you make sure that there's no tilt to it, you know, fore and aft or side to side. If you're seeing some funniness going on with the numbers in each one of those orientations, your Z column may be twisting. Okay? If it's twisting, that's a good indication that the machine might have been crashed and your Z column uh, has been bent in some way. That's a very difficult problem to fix. If you find the Z column is leaning, most of the time that's indicative of poor level. So the first thing you want to do is back up the truck, go back to square one, make sure our machine's level. Remember, the Z column is this you know, pillar that's hanging out in space, if it, and it's very heavy, it's got a lot of mass. If the machine's tilting a little bit, that may cause the Z column to have some error. So we want to make sure it's level before we go any further. If you find your machine is level, and you're still having some tilt in the Z column, uh, then, typically, you're going to have to adjust the mating of the Z column to the base of the machine. Most machines uh, aren't one single piece, but they're actually mated together, and there's some shims and adjustments that can be made to the column. Along with uh, tilt and squareness, we also have straightness, just like on X and Y and those can be adjusted by the, the Gibbs. If your Z is coming down and it's making a snake pattern, um, you're going to have to straighten it out and get, and get it straight. Um, so there's a lot of things in Z as well that need to be adjusted just like our table. Let's go back to the machine. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more of the same as in X and Y. If you watch the X and Y videos, um, this will be the same stuff. We're just going to check Z next. So we have our setup to check Z. I'm just going to check the one axis of motion, and, and that is if it's tilting towards us or away from us. Uh, the second test is to rotate the square around 90 degrees and then check the Z for this height. Now again, this machine is uh, a very good machine. It's got very little uh, squareness error in Z as well. Um, I didn't actually have to adjust anything on Z at all. It, it came in, the Z was pretty good. Uh, I do plan on replacing uh, the linear rails and the ball screw on Z. Um, the ball screw is a little worn, and the linear rails have the most mileage on them just because Z tends to move the most because every tool change you do, you're coming all the way up, changing tools, and then driving all the way back down. So Z tends to get the most mileage. So let's sweep down the edge of our square and see what we get. So we're uh, pretty much at zero, maybe one minor hash mark off zero. Now I don't know if the GoPro is going to stay in focus. It's kind of a hard setup. You want to make sure the square doesn't hit the Z axis 
and then I needed to make sure the GoPro didn't hit the square either. So we're sweeping down. We're about four inches down, and uh, the indicator didn't move at all yet. I think right at the very bottom of travel, I got a little kick out. Still no movement, perfectly square. Still perfectly square. So right at the very bottom, we've got maybe a, th a ten thousandths or two of movement uh, at the very bottom, the z-axis moves away from the square. So you can see our z-axis on this machine is, is very well squared in and it's very straight as well. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're checking your z-axis this way, it's going to be dependent on your table. Uh, if you recall back in some of our other videos, especially the video we did on leveling the machine, we found that this machine does have a small bit of roll error to it as X goes through, and it's about 20 to 30 arc seconds. Keep that in mind when you set this test up. We want to try to keep this square uh, resting as close to the center of the table as possible, and we want to have X centered as close as possible so that we get a true uh, measure of our table here. Um, We've got a couple of low spots in the table over here and over here. So if you put the square in one of those low spots, it's going to artificially tell you your Z is not in square. So again, you've got to make sure that you understand your, your reference datum of your table before you move on to the Z axis. So now that we've verified our Z, our study of the motion and mechanics of our, our machine is almost complete. We did our table and our X and Y. Now we checked our Z for straightness and square. And you can see this machine is dialed in pretty tight. Uh, we can make some pretty good parts on this machine. We do have uh, some small deviations that we found during our testing during these videos. Uh, but once we know them, uh, we can work within them and account for them and it kind of guides us on how much accuracy uh, we can tell our customers when we go to make their parts. Uh, we do have a few more items that we need to check. Now that we have our z-axis done and our table done, we can move on to tramming of the spindle. So that will be our, our next episode is we'll show how to tram the spindle. Um, it will be a little bit of repeat. There's a lot of episodes out there on YouTube on how to tram spindles, so it's going to be a little bit uh, of the same. The big takeaway is we have to do all of this stuff before we even think about tramming our spindle. And, and that's a big mistake that people make a lot of times is that they'll just tram the spindle and start making parts, but there's a lot of effort and work that has to go into getting the machine to the point where we can reliably tram our spindle. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll tram the spindle next in the next episode. And uh, have a good one.